Aaron, thanks for your time. Our topic is something that with which we're all familiar. We, we know about the, uh, the, the food pyramid that has been promulgated by the FDA for many, many years. We're pretty much all familiar with it, but that has changed. Mm -hmm. what, is it, what is it now and what does it mean? Yes, so now what we have is something called Choose My Plate. And Choose My Plate was actually developed to help translate the 2010 Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Um, it's supposed to help make it a little bit easier for us to understand um, how to eat healthy and how to live healthy lives through our nutrition. Mm -hmm. And you may, have a you may have answered this, but let me just follow up. Why was it developed? What was wrong with the pyramid? I think what the, the USDA felt and um, with the help of Michelle Obama and the Committee for Fighting Obesity is that the pyramid did not really translate in the kitchen a whole lot. And so the plate seemed to be something a little more appropriate, something that we identify with mealtime, something we identify with eating. And so it seemed to be a little bit uh, more appropriate icon to use um, for teaching nutrition. How is it different? What are the significant differences between the Choose My Play program and the old food pyramid? Um, visually, obviously, it's very different um, as opposed to a big pyramid. Now you have a, a circular plate, and what they've done is they've kind of defined what a plate should look like. Um, hopefully half the plate would be fruits and vegetables, a quarter of the plate whole grain starch, um, carbohydrate, and a quarter of the plate uh, lean protein. Um, they've identified getting some low-fat dairy in there as well. Um, the difference is with the pyramid, it had all the different food groups kind of divided down the middle of the pyramid, and then they specified exactly how many servings of each group of food you should try to get each day. So um, there are some differences with the plate. It's a little more simplified. Um, it's not quite as specific, and there have been some complaints about that, but I think it does translate a little bit better, um, like I said, in the kitchen, so I think it's going to be easier with a little bit of um, education, a little bit of supplementation to it for, for people to understand. As I understand it, Aaron, the, the Choose My Plate concept is built on, or the Choose My Plate program is built on three concepts. Balancing calories, foods to increase, foods to decrease. Amplify on that a little bit for us. Foods to decrease that we're going to focus on are going to be foods high in sodium. So we want to look at decreasing our processed foods, such as canned soups, um, frozen prepared meals, and overall just looking at um, the number of sodium grams, um, milligrams of sodium on the label. Uh, the goal for the day is less than 2,000 milligrams, so you can kind of use that as your guide when looking at labels. And the big one, in my opinion, is the sugary drinks. Um, and I think this is leading to a lot of the obesity in our children, especially. Um, not just sodas, but fruit juice and Gatorade and Kool-Aid. Um, so looking to decrease the amount of sugary drinks that we take in. And not just supplementing those with um, artificial sweeteners, but trying to get used to drinking water and unsweetened drinks so that our taste buds aren't always expecting something sweet. Foods to increase? Foods to increase, um, fruits and vegetables. Um, of the vegetables specifically, um, they have a lot less calories. So by getting more of those, we're going to be displacing um, the foods that are not so good for us. Um, and we want to get more of the low-fat dairy, so um, fat-free 1% um, milk um, as opposed to the full-fat milk, and then getting more of our high-fiber carbohydrate, the 100% whole wheat bread, 100% whole wheat pasta, brown rice, as opposed to the white versions. And then the third concept was balancing calories. What about that? Correct. So portion control plays a big role with balancing calories. So um, when you look at weight control and um, trying to um, burn off more calories than you take in in a day, that's your calorie balance. So if we can um, just eat the right amount of the foods that we enjoy as opposed to trying to restrict all of our favorite foods, that seems to be a more successful approach to weight control. Now that the plate concept has been out a few weeks, some of the criticism has been, and there's quite a bit, as a matter of fact, you know, the material that we've provided for this segment, some of the criticism is that it's too simplified, it excludes healthy fats, it visually implies one glass of milk, and it doesn't differentiate between healthy proteins and those you should limit. Those are just some of the negatives. Mm -hmm. You're a certified dietitian. What do you think of these criticisms? 
Yeah, I do think that on the surface of it, you know, you can complain about a lot of those things, but I do think that with a little bit of supplemental information, it's going to translate better and it's going to be a little more effective than the pyramid was. Um, I think that if you go to myplate.gov, the or choose myplate.gov, I'm sorry, the um, website does have a lot of that supplemental teaching material where they do have um, education on the good versus the bad fats and tips on getting more dairy and it just goes into a lot more detail. But I think you have to start with a very simple concept to get to the greater population and then you can kind of pinpoint who you're talking to to kind of tailor it a little bit better. Um, for each particular person. But um, it, it's a starting point, and I think it's going to be a little bit better platform than the pyramid was overall. We are bombarded, <clears throat> pardon me, we're bombarded by so called experts on nutrition. You hear them on the radio, you see them on TV, you see the infomercials, people you talk to. Everybody is, to, is either listening to or uh, considers himself to be an expert on nutri nutrition. How do you know who to listen to? Right. Well, I'm obviously biased. Um, as a registered dietitian, I do feel like um, you're going to get the most reliable and accurate information by a registered dietitian. Um, there's a lot of people who can call themselves nutritionists or um, other things using that title, but a, a registered dietitian is someone who I feel you can trust with um, reliable nutrition information. Are there Amplifying on that, are there easy to use, easy to understand resources that are uh, available that you can recommend? Um, I have um, looked through the choosemyplate.gov website and there actually are quite a few um, very easy to read teaching materials and, and good reading materials and I'm sure that will be growing. Um, also the American Dietetic Association's website eatright.org has a lot of good information as well as a good tool for finding a registered dietitian in your area if needed. So those are two good good resources. I want to ask you a bonus question. Okay. If we followed the Choose My Plate program more generally, if we just as a, as a society ate better, mm -hmm. how much could we lower our overall health care bill? How significant an impact, let me re-ask the question, how significant an impact is our diet having on our health as a society? I think it's very significant. I wouldn't know for sure how to put a dollar amount to it, but I think when you look at the obesity-related diseases, such as diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and so on, that it would be very significant if we could control the obesity epidemic in and of itself. Um, so, again, I'm not sure I could put a dollar amount on it, but well, I Well, I wouldn't ask for a specific dollar amount, but in terms of just the, the impact on, on the demands on the health care system, would it be a significant be huge. If, we, yeah, if we ate better? Absolutely. I, I think it would be absolutely huge. Right. <laughs> I don't know how to define it more than, the, than the that. Significant. significant. Very well. Yes. Erin, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for spending time with us today. Thank you.